Good morning, everybody. Today, we are going to perform wing puncture. So regarding the wing puncture, we need several requirements. That's why I've prepared it here, and I'm going to show you uh, about the requirements. Regarding the requirements, we need syringe here with a hypodermic needle for puncturing, and also we need tourniquet, alcohol pad for cleaning, and also we need a test tube. Based on the kind of the ordinary test, we have to prepare several test tubes. And here we have a test tube with anticoagulant. We have EDTA here. And in order to prepare serum, we need a kind of test tube with a clot activator or without anticoagulant. And beside this, also we need goes in order to stop bleeding. After puncturing, after, after finishing the drawing, you have to use goes. Also, you have to prepare a marker in order to label your test tube. Be careful, it's very important to label the test tube. Regarding the procedure, uh, you need a patient. That's why we have prepared the patient here. And after that, you have to explain the procedure briefly for the patient. After that, you can start the drawing. So how to start drawing? Based on the Physician's order, so I'm going to draw a blood from you. Will that be okay? Okay, let's check the identification. So you are, your name? Nawaz Hama. Nawaz Hama, okay. And I'm going to make a puncture here. And will that be okay with you? Okay. We're going to start by applying tourniquet. And be careful about the location of the tourniquet should be nearly above the puncture site, about four fingers here. And after that, you are going to check the presence of the vein. You can see it uh, if you are lucky, but be careful. Most of the time, you have to feel it by a technique which is known as palpation. After finding a suitable vein, I'll find here, you can start cleaning. You have to use the antiseptic and you have different antiseptics. Normally, you can use alcohol pad. Here we have alcohol pad by a circular motion, just like that. So after cleaning the puncture site, remove the tourniquet, and you have to wait for about 30 to 60 seconds for air drying. During air drying, you have to inspect your needle for any manufactured defect. And it's better to do it not in front of the patient's eye. And after that, when you have prepared your needle, you have to reapply the tourniquet. Same location. If you have experience, you can do it by applying tourniquet for one time. But be careful, the application of tourniquet should be uh, fewer than one minute, okay? How to start puncture? Four fingers below the arm, and this finger in order to stretch the skin, the bevel up bevel of the needle, should be like that, and after that, start puncturing. If you are in the vein, you will see the blood will come, Be careful, you have to fix one of the hand, and after that, by another hand, try to pull the plunger. After finishing the blood drawing, if you collect a sufficient amount of blood, you have to remove the tourniquet gently, and do not remove the needle. You have to apply a gauze slowly, remove the needle, okay? And you have to tell the patient, apply pressure for about three minutes, okay? You have to transfer the blood directly to the test tube, as we said, based on the ordered testes. Here we need CBC, that's why I'm going to transfer the blood into a test tube with EDTA. Do not press the plunger, it will cause hemolysis the blood will go automatically because of the negative pressure inside the test tube. So you can see it here, 
the blood will go. How much blood do I have to transfer? You have a line here, so you have to reach the line. If you press it, the blood will hemolyze. That's why I'm going to press it slightly because you have a narrow lumen of the needle. So you have reached the point here. And after that, slowly remove the needle. Gentle mixing and be careful about labeling. You have two type, types of labeling. You can do it before uh, the sampling, and after that you can do it after the sampling. Both of them correct, but I prefer uh, before sampling. Uh, so how to recap the needle? Be careful. Do not try it like that. You may face a needle stick injury. So what should we do? It's better to put the needle on a surface like that. And I'm going to remove this drop of blood. The best, best method here, by using one hand technique, just like that. Okay, and after that, you can just skewer the cup. That's how to recap the needle. If you need the blood, you can transfer the blood to another test tube, but here we don't need because we got a sufficient amount of blood. After transferring all the blood to the test tube, you have to do mixing for about uh, six to eight inversion. And after that, as we said, you have to label our test tube. Be careful, you have to check the spelling with the recursion form. And I'm going to label here a test tube with the name of the patient. And it's better to use a date of birth and also other uh, information. And after that, now the sample is ready for the test. After transferring the blood to the test tube, you have to check the puncture site for bleeding, okay? If there is no bleeding, as we said, you have to tell the patient for applying pressure for about three minutes. And if you see minor bleeding, it's better to use uh, uh, another gauze in order to stop the bleeding. And also, as I said, you have to tell the patient to apply pressure. Depend on the kind of the patient. If you have a patient and the uh, blood thinners may be uh, the stopping of the, bloody, uh, of the bleeding, maybe it uh, requires for about five to 10 minutes. But normally, about three to five minutes, the blood will stop. After finishing the procedure, be careful in order to clean your bench. This test tube is, is uh, for the samples. And also you have to remove all waste parts here. This one for the normal wastes, and this one for the rigid and sharp agents. Be careful about that. So try to clean your bench and in order to be prepared for another sampling. And it's better to clean the bench by using disinfectant. Also, you can use antiseptic, but be careful. Disinfectant is better for non-living surface.